Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. So Halloween was last Thursday. It was fun to see all the trick-or-treaters coming around in their costumes and passing out candy to them. Maybe you had some trick-or-treaters stop by your place. It dawned on me, though, that trick-or-treat night is really a big old version of corporate theater. We've got actors in costumes, right? The kids who dress up as different characters. There are set pieces, like all the decorations out in people's yards. And there's a story being told. A story where it is perfectly safe to take candy from strangers. (laughs) Because during the rest of the year, that's not the story we tell. But for the one night, though, everybody just plays their part and has fun doing it. And the funny thing is, this entire corporate theater production is all about death. Like, kids can walk from door to door carrying bloody knives in their hands and we don't think twice about it. There are skeletons and headstones and caskets in people's front yards and it does not bother us. There can be haunted houses where people jump out at you with chainsaws and people pay money to see it. All of that doesn't bother us because we know it's all fake. It's all just pretend. It's theater. And then when the show is over, the costumes come off, the sets get taken down, and we move on to other things. Like the day after Halloween, there's already Christmas music in the story. (laughs) But for a while, though, we treat death as if it's pretend. In our heads, of course, we know that death is not pretend. We know that death is real. But usually when we hear about the reality of it, it's from some news story. Where death happened to somebody else somewhere else. Like, think about all the hurricanes that hit Florida recently. All the devastation that they caused. Right, yes, it's sad hearing about stuff like that and hearing about people dying, but we've become kind of numb to those stories. We'll just scroll past them and go back to watching funny cat videos. But then there are times that death is not pretend. And it does not happen to somebody else somewhere else. There are times that you are not numb to death because it happens in your life. And the reality of death hits you. And it hits you hard. Someone you love actually died. Maybe it was sudden and expected, Maybe it was unexpected, maybe it was a long period of suffering, maybe it was something else, right? There's all kinds of situations. But whatever the case may be, the person you love is no longer with you. And that hurts. You can't easily pack that pain away like Halloween decorations. You can't take that grief off like taking off a Halloween costume. When death happens for you, other people may feel sad for you and try to console you. But for them, this is still a death that happened to somebody else. But since they're close to you, they will express genuine concern. But in most cases, that lasts for about a week. That's long enough for them to hear the news of the death, express their condolences, send some flowers, come to the funeral, maybe bring you a casserole, and that's it. Then they move on with their lives. Because it didn't happen to them. But you can't move on like that. 
because your loved one isn't here with you anymore. You are still grieving and sad and angry. You still have all these raw emotions inside you and you just want to yell at somebody. And this is exactly where Mary and Martha are in today's gospel reading. Now, of course, this reading is part of a longer scene that many of us know. It begins when the two women send word to Jesus that their brother Lazarus, whom Jesus loved, is sick. They want Jesus to come and help them. But Jesus doesn't go right away, which seems really strange, right? I mean, if you heard that a good friend of yours was sick and dying, you would probably go out to see them right away. Or if you got word from the hospice nurse that your loved one had only hours left, you would drop what you're doing and head over there to say your goodbyes. But Jesus doesn't do that. He waits a few days. When he does finally show up, Lazarus is dead and buried. And so Martha, full of all of these raw emotions, she just lets into it. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. I can imagine her yelling that at him. I can imagine her wanting to shake Jesus or just slap him, right? She is angry. And that's okay. When a loved one dies, you are allowed to be angry and yell at Jesus. You are allowed to complain and cry and grieve. Jesus can handle it. Go ahead and dump all your emotions on him. In fact, Mary does the same thing later. She even yells the exact same line. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. These two women blame Jesus for Lazarus' death. If he had been here, he could have prevented this. Maybe you feel the same way about the death of your love. If Jesus had been here, he could have stopped this. If he had intervened, then you wouldn't have an empty seat at your dinner table right now. If he had done something, then your loved one would still be alive. All right, this is not pretend death. This is not death happening to somebody else somewhere else. This is real death, and it's happening in your life. And this is why we so easily connect with these sisters. Because we understand their anger and their pain and their grief. Right? This is reality. This is what happens. But then the story takes a turn. And I think we stop relating to it. Because something happens that doesn't seem like reality. Jesus goes to Lazarus' tomb, calls to him, and Lazarus comes out. Wrapped up in all those burial clothes. And Jesus tells the people, unbind him and let him go. Almost like they need to help Lazarus get out of his mummy Halloween costume. And I think we stop connecting to that story because that hasn't happened for any of our loans. When we go to the funerals, we get that holy moment of the last look in the casket before the lid is closed. And then that's it. We don't get to see our loved one again. They don't come back out. And so in hearing this story, part of us thinks, well, good for Mary and Martha, but what about me? Why didn't Jesus bring my loved one back? Well, because 
Jesus never promised us immortality. But he does promise us resurrection. Think of it this way. Yes, Lazarus came out of the grave that day. But there was another day later when he was buried again. And that time he did not come. So does that mean that Jesus just bought Lazarus some more time? More importantly, does it mean that Jesus is not victorious over death if Lazarus died anyway? No. Jesus is victorious over death. We just need to look closer to see how. At the beginning of the story, as I said, Jesus does not rush out right away to see Lazarus. And I think it's because he knows that death is not the end. If Jesus had thought death was the end, then I bet he would have dropped what he was doing, rushed over there, and tried to do something to stop it. But since he knew that he was more powerful than death, he knew there was nothing to worry about. He knew that Lazarus was already in his care. Right? That was not in question. What was in question was whether the sisters knew that they were in his care too. In this entire story of 44 verses, Jesus' interaction with Lazarus takes only two at the very end. The rest of the story is about Jesus being with the sisters and joining them in their grief. So the focus of the story is on them and all of their emotions, not Lazarus. Sometimes, in the face of death, we are so overwhelmed by all our emotions that we forget that nothing overwhelms Jesus. Nothing worries him. Nothing stresses him out. Even so, he chooses to join us in our grief. He joins the sisters in their grief and weeps with them. He is right there beside them. What breaks their heart breaks his heart. And what breaks your heart breaks his heart. Yes, we trust in the promise of resurrection, but death still hurts. Or let me put it this way. Even though you know how the story ends, it's still okay to cry at the sad part. In those sad parts, though, we need the reminder of resurrection. We need the reminder that death is not the end. And so Jesus provides that. Earlier in this story, before he got to Lazarus' grave, he was talking with Martha and said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Notice, he did not ask, did Lazarus believe this? If Lazarus believed in me, then I'll bring him back to life. If not, well, then tough luck. No. Jesus asked, do you, Martha, believe this? Jesus was reminding Martha that he gives new life to her, too. And she said, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. Martha trusted that Jesus was who he said he was 
and that he could do what he promised. Today, on this All Saints Sunday, we remember our loved ones who have died, especially those in the past year. And we remember that they are already in Jesus' care, just like they were before he died. And we remember that Jesus wraps us in that same care, too. So if there is someone you love whose name is listed on your bulletin, or someone whose memory still lives in your heart, remember, Jesus already has them. That's not in question. What is in question is whether you'll remember that he has you, too. Jesus came not just to bring Lazarus to new life, but to bring Mary and Martha to new life, too. Which means, yes, death is real and death hurts, but Jesus is also real, and Jesus is stronger than death. Jesus is the one who brings new life. As I mentioned a few weeks ago, death is inevitable, but resurrection is guaranteed. For you and your loved ones and for all of us, Jesus is the resurrection and the life, now and forever. And unlike Halloween, there is nothing pretend about that. So in the name of this one who has all of us living and dead in his care, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.